Ms. Fudge, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, it was uh, enlightening to hear of your success stories and as well to hear our chairman talk about the need for these programs now more than ever. And with that said, uh, I do have to note that Perkins funding has declined by 24% since 1998. So if we need these programs, certainly we need to take a look at how we fund them. Um, Senator, can you just talk to me about how this reduction in funds has hindered the expansion of high quality CTE programs? The reduction of funds is sort of coming at the exactly the wrong time because good news is I think there's a renaissance of awareness that this is really important. And with the economic circumstances of the, especially the, the fiscal reversals and recession of you know, 2008, 2010, there's even more need for training and more need for people to, to receive that training. So the funding has been going down at the same time as the need has been increasing. And thank goodness, we've all been realizing the importance of these programs. So it, uh, this, you get good bang for the buck out of these investments. And I, I just want to say, I, you know, as we all fly a lot, I was sitting on a plane one day next to a guy, and this is in the last month, who probably had the dirtiest fingernails I've ever seen in my life, right? So I asked him what he does. He teaches welding to young people at a high school in Texas. He started to talk to me about how important Perkins was. He started to talk to me about what these young people have accomplished through his programs and how they have succeeded when no one thought they would succeed. So I agree 100%. We need to look at the funding and we need to fund more of these programs so these young people can come out and do productive things. We know that there's a shortage of welders in this country, of bricklayers and masons. We need to train them. And I think that we can do that if we put the resources in it. So I thank you for that. Uh, as well to you, Senator Kane, um, last year I introduced the Go to High School, Go to College Act, which would expand Pell eligibility, of course, for students uh, attending early college high schools. Mm -hmm. You introduced the Jobs Act last year as well, which, which um, would allow Pell grants to students enrolled in short-term job training programs. Can you talk a bit about why it's important for us to expand the use of Pell grants to these kinds of programs? Okay, I'm, I'll get on my soapbox. This is really important. This is an example of the second class status of CTE that still is kind of contained in the federal laws. So Pell Grant, if you income qualify, you can get a Pell Grant, but the course has to be the length of a college semester. A lot of high intensity welding programs are 10 week courses. It's not the length of a college semester, it's not 14 weeks. So we don't allow Pell Grants for these intense CTE programs. Why don't we? I mean, the, the, the student income qualifies. It's because we have viewed those programs as second class. I'll tell you another one. In the military, active duty, military tuition assistance benefit. You can get that if your CO says what you want to study is relevant to your MOS. You can use it at a community college or a college, up to $4,500 a year. But if you want to use $300, to take the American Welding Society certification exam, because you're trained as an ordinance enlisted or officer, you can't use the money for the certification exam. You've got to use it on a college campus. It makes no sense. There are still many policies that kind of hold the college and CTE on two levels. And some of the best policy we can do is going through and removing those vestiges of the day when CTE was not viewed as of equal measure. And that's why we introduced the Jobs Act. So if you income qualify, take that 10-week HVAC intensive course. It doesn't have to be the, the length of a college semester. Well, certainly I'm, I'm hopeful that that is something we can do on a bipartisan basis. It makes all the sense in the world. So I'm hoping that my colleagues will be supportive of it. Uh, lastly to you, uh, Senator Kane, please talk to me about why it is important for us to address the Higher Education Act as it relates to yeah. Uh, training educators in the CTE programs? Um, great, yeah, great question. The Higher Education Act is also maybe the best place to, to fix this Pell Grant disparity that we, that we were just discussing. Uh, but, but training is critical. The, one of the bills that we have that I was discussing in my testimony, the um, Educating Tomorrow's Workforce Act, really talks about this career training and professionalism. I think we've all seen many of our great teachers these days are career switchers, but there is no place where that is more the case than in CTE education. And I'm sure that the teacher that you talked to on the, train, uh, on the plane 
with the dirty fingernails. Before he was a teacher, he was a practicing welder, and then he was bringing that into the classroom. So professional development is really important, and maybe with a special focus on the, uh, the career switcher to bring them from the technical field into the classroom. They tend to be the, you know, the most popular teachers in, in many of the schools where they work. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. And Lady yields back, uh, Senator Kane.